Oh, I got jitters. We're doing this again. It's been a long time. <laughs> Two All years. Right. <laughs> All right, guys. What's up? You are listening to the Day Tripper Podcast. It's April of the year 2020, and we are podcasting to you from quarantine. Uh, as always, I'm joined by my trusty sidekicks and co-host, Lindsay Tut. Hey. All the way coming from Fort Worth. Keller, technically, yeah. and Todd White down the street in Georgetown, even though he might as well be in Timbuktu, Kansas. What's up? What's up, guys? How y'all doing? Is Timbuktu it's been a while, Kansas? Man. No, Timbuktu is in Washington. Is There's a real, a real town. I think there is. Anyway, is let's do this. All right, guys, podcast today is brought to us by the Day Tripper World Headquarters. So, I mean, it's been a long time since we talked to y'all. And uh, in that time, we have opened up a shop on the Georgetown Square. Now, things being as they are, we are currently closed, but we moved the entire shop online. So check out thedaytripper.com, click on store or go to store.thedaytripper.com. And you can surf through all of our stuff. We got lots of cool shirts. Uh, but more excitingly, we got all these Texas makers that we had in our physical shop up now for sale online. So we've got all kinds of rubs and seasonings if you're cooking from home. We've got gifts for people. We got cool um, knives that are made in the panhandle. Lots of candles because we know your quarantined house is starting to stink about now. So order some candles. Anyway, uh, go online. Check it all out. We're really proud of all the makers, people across Texas we've been able to pull into the shop. We hope you all like it too. Uh, visit thedaytripper.com and do some Texas shopping. All right. So obviously, it's been a long time since we've done this and the world has turned upside down. Uh, hit it, Lindsay. You know what you want to do. Oh, the world turned upside there we go. down. Hamilton there we go. Uh, every every Hamilton. Hamilton. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I uh, totally missed that. I have no yeah. clue. No reference. She was right there. That's we his favorite thing to right do is like there. leave a Hamilton quote and be like, Lindsay, go. And then I'm go. Like, oh. I do that quite a bit. <laughs> yeah. So always prepared. Uh so and, random aside, last night. Laura goes, look around, girls, to my girls. And all of a sudden, what did they start doing? <laughs> look around. around. Look around. Okay. All right. Anyway, anyway. Raising we, our mind. We, coronavirus has obviously put a halt on day tripping. We are, uh, the, the team is all, we're all working from home. It's been, it's been interesting. And there's a lot of uh, places that are, you know, the, their future is certainly unknown at this point and there's a lot of anxiety a lot of people worried will they have jobs when this whole thing is over and uh we just want to say a, a a prayer and we think we're, we're thinking about all you guys certainly praying for y'all as we get through this thing uh we're recording this on april 15th it's tax day y'all what uh although that got bumped down the road as of today there's over fourteen thousand cases in texas the the worst of it there's over almost four thousand in harris county alone, uh, which is certainly not to be minimized. We're all quarantining, staying in place. I hope you guys are staying home, staying safe. Uh, the curve looks like it's flattening somewhat, and uh, we'll be back. We'll, we'll be resuming day tripping uh, soon enough, but just want to go ahead and just give you guys some encouragement to try to make the most of it. We're, we're all in quarantine now. Uh, I've been with the kids doing homeschooling, which is absolutely crazy. I, I should say I've been doing home. My wife has been doing homeschooling. I've been trying to work from home as my one-year-old son pushes my office door open and comes and likes to bang on my computer. Uh, we we made a little video called Stay Trippers. If y'all haven't seen that, uh, check it out because we are all staying at home right now, but trying to make the most of, of this little time we've been given because I really do think that this is something we're going to be talking to our grandkids about. As, as strange as that is, someday we're going to be remembering the days when we were quarantined. Uh, you always wonder, like, what are the moments of my life? Like, I wasn't around to see man landing on the moon, uh, but we're witnessing something, I think, just as momentous in history where it's like, where were you when we got quarantined? So anyway, I'm in Georgetown in my office, and you can judge by all the things around me how crazy it is in my house. What about y'all? Um, I am back with my parents um, in Keller. This is actually my childhood house. So definitely never thought I'd be recording a podcast from my childhood house. 
I can see um, your your bedspread, Lindsay. Is yeah. that your your flowery? Let's just uh, look over here. Uh, <laughs> is that a um, Justin Bieber poster? No, just don't look at that. It's okay. Um, but actually, my sister is actually also here with us. She lives in New York, where it's just crazy. And she like came back to Texas and had to do like a state mandated two week quarantine. So survive that. She's back here. It's interesting because we're all in the same house again. So that will be fun and interesting, but uh, very weird, weird times for sure. Yeah, for sure. She got out of New York safe, I guess. Like she got yeah, out. She kind did. of. I mean, not that it, it, it's it been crazy for a long time in New York. I guess she's, yeah. are all of her friends okay? I mean, everybody. Well, a lot of them actually started leaving the city around the same time as her, if not like the week before, just trying to get out because they're saying that like 50% of New York is going to get it. And Ooh. so like, a lot of her friends just started like laying down. And so she was like, all right, let's do it. I'm going to go to Texas. Peace. So, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It anyways. Yeah. 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 Todd, what about Todd, you, what man? Spe speaking of the door at your know, like, house. Uh-oh, here he comes. Dun, uh, dun, <laughs> dun, dun. I'll show you all this, this cute little dinosaur. Cute. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Oh, there he is. Look at Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Oh, Nick. Hey, you hey, got a little horn. Say hi. Oh, hi, say hi. It's your first podcast debut. Don't blow it. What's going on, guys? <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Tell him something. <laughs> he's he's fascinated by this orb. Ooh. All right, and there's Laura. Hi, y'all. And everybody, we got Lala and Ren and Cannon. Hi. Hey, we'll do a pod. We'll do a family podcast here in a little bit. Hi, Mr. Todd. <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> they love Mr. Todd. He's gone on some family trips with us to like Oregon. And San Antonio. Uncle Todd is what they call it mostly. Uncle Todd. Oh, Uncle so Todd. cute. Well, I am. I am in Georgetown as well, just like Chet is, just uh, not too far from Chet, actually. And um, I'm just hanging out, just doing work uh, and doing a bunch of online training and teaching um, some classes and um, doing product photography here at the house as well, which is kind of cool. And, you know, you mentioned about doing the whole homeschooling thing and um, Tatum, who's our granddaughter is stuck at home. And so Patsy and I have been doing some, some lessons kind of helping out our daughter with, with some schooling for Tatum. So Patsy's doing women in history and I'm teaching her how to play chess and teaching her photography. That is awesome. Very important. Are you doing like doing it all like via zoom or Google hangouts? Uh, I'm using Google hangouts for everything. And then I'm using chess.com to teach her how to play chess. So we, we set up the, um, you know, an iPad on one side and we jump online on the other and we, we can see each other and talk trash and learn chess. Ah, that's too awesome, man. That is so awesome. Well, uh, yeah, does that's what we're doing immediately. And y'all know in Talk in Texas, we usually uh, do like, hey, what have you been doing this past month? But since it's been two years, what have y'all been doing this past two years? Take it away, Lindsay. <laughs> well, Lindsay and I, I have like been doing a lot of stuff together, uh, just working yeah. at the office six oh, yeah. feet from each other i mean just work wise like tons has changed you know opening dthq the app gotta plug those things for sure for sure um, what but, app are you talking about Lindsay? oh well let me tell you it's the day tripper field guide app and we launched it a month ago and you can download it and travel around texas when you're not quarantining yeah. and find all of our day trips in your phone take chet in your pocket with you boom yeah, can I, can I do that good? Okay. Yeah, that kind of that was really good. good Unrehearsed good. too. Well done. Well done. Okay. I'm not gonna put Todd on the spot and make him show us his day tripper field guide app. I've got my doubts if it's on his phone or not. Yeah, I don't know about that. It's possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, wait, downloading now. Oh no. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. But man, the app certainly exciting. That was fun. Uh opening up a shop, moving to our new office. Oh yeah. Super fun. And yeah. Then, We've been working on a ton of uh, like, um, gosh, you know, I feel like in past two years, this whole idea of like social media influencers or whatever has kind of taken off. So we've been really busy with a lot of those kind of social media promotion things, And it's been it's been really fun to try to navigate that new world, blossoming new part of our business, which is weird oh, yeah. because no one quite knows what's going on in that world. We're kind of we find ourselves positioned as experts, which is. Like, that's what makes scary. it fun. It's kind of yeah, that's right. Through it, I think. 
And Todd's been hanging out with fashionistas all over the world. That's right. So still doing my gig as a fashion photographer and doing fashion videography as well. And of course, still on the crew with the Day Tripper guys, which also um, resulted in my first Emmy Award too, just uh, last year, which was cool. So yeah. And then also after a lot of hard work, picked up a global camera sponsor also. So it's pretty cool. So I'm, I'm a Lumix global ambassador for the cameras. And then also picked up an audio sponsor with a uh, ceremonic. So it's been fun. Uh, nope. Oh, we had a baby. Y'all just saw him. The baby is there pers- in the personal life. Uh, he just turned one this past Sunday. What? Easter. I know. Isn't that quite crazy? So old. I know. Easter Sunday, he was his birthday. So we did, we did all the Jesus stuff in the morning. And then his afternoon was like birthday stuff. Which <laughs> I like was, how you state that. Fun. You're like, so uh, he came up in there somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somewhere, somewhere in there. We'll be talking more about what we've been up to as these months progress. So anyway, while we've been away, let's tra- let's go ahead and get to the next part of the podcast. Meanwhile, in Texas. While you've been listening to this podcast, lots of stuff's been going on in the Lone Star State. This is Meanwhile in Texas. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll jump in and go first. This is a story that came ap- across my uh feed and I was like, are you absolutely are you kidding me? A man who owns a dog foot com- dog foot dog food. <laughs> <laughs> he sells dog feet. <laughs> okay. There might be dog go feet with, in there. Oh, oh, no, no, the, no. Go with the dog feet and then and then keep the story going. Yeah, right, right, right. So uh he sells dog food from a little town called Munster, Texas. You've been to Munster, Lindsay. You went up there with your dad, didn't you? Like to eat German food yeah. and cheese and stuff. It's about 85 miles northwest of Dallas. Anyway, this guy makes what he calls very high quality dog food. And to prove how good his dog food was, for 30 days, he ate nothing but dog food. That's called believing in your product, folks. Here we go. It is not your average kibbles and bits. It is a variety of meats like chicken, beef meatballs, fish, and elk patties. Oh, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. Anyway, he grew accustomed to the pet food pa- palate. Felderhoff, that's that's the name of the guy who owns it, said ancient grains, ocean fish, and meatballs became his favorites. <laughs> when it was all over, 30 days of dog food led to losing 30 pounds <laughs> and helping adopt 30 dogs from the local shelter. Oh, he may my be gosh. Onto something. He may be onto something there as far as the oh. weight loss program. I, I could get into that except for the elk patties. That was a no. little fun. I, I don't know about any I just of it, wonder, man. is he like barking at mailmen now? Like, yeah. has he noticed that he like scratches on his foot and barks yeah. at mailmen? He wakes up and puts on his house slippers. He's realized like he spent all night chewing them up and, <laughs> into bits, little bits. Uh, <laughs> that's that's strange, man. And I could see it. Like people are always so desperate to come up with the next great diet. 30 pounds in 30 days ain't bad. Dog food. Not bad. That's it. Elf patties. <laughs> Not bad. Elf you know what's funny though? A lot of the the little um, boutique um, pet stores that make their own um, pet treats and all, they do talk about the fact that they are um, for humans to eat as well. And it doesn't hurt you to eat that. Even like tail wagons here in Georgetown, they all talk about that, that their treats are for humans too. You can get away with it. Have you ever had dog food? I just, I need to ask you that. Have you no, ever- I, I have I have tried one of their treats, but I have never eaten dog food. Okay. <laughs> There's a difference. No, I don't know. I accidentally pulled a dog biscuit out of a cookie jar and took a bite thinking, oh, it's a cookie. Not a cookie. Not a cookie. Tastes nothing like a cookie. So, meh. All right, what'd you, what'd you find, Todd? I'm throwing to you. Cool. So, um, this is a little bit back in January time frame, but... Um, I found that the Mars Wrigley confectionery plant in Waco, Texas, made the world's largest Snickers bar, and they compared it to the size of a Volkswagen. What? So oh. it was 12 feet long, and it weighed nice. 4,728 pounds. <laughs> Did they deliver? <laughs> Did they deliver? Because I'll take that. Right? <laughs> what happened to it? Did someone eat it? I, I don't like, know. All it talks about is they made it to be used in the Super Bowl ad on the 2nd of February, and then that's it. And I'm not sure where that went because I love Snickers. And so I was getting a little bit jealous there for a moment. 
I'm kind of like with Lindsay on that. You can drop part of that at my house and part of that with her house. Yeah, I'll put it fine. That sounds delicious. Well, like, hey, that's just, you know, one of those classic everything's bigger in Texas stories. Love it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, Lindsay. Okay, this is probably my favorite. It's like the most Texas story ever. So, as you know, Petco has a policy that all leashed pets are welcome. So, a guy in Humble, Texas, that's how you say that. Okay, right? um, Humble. Humble. Yeah, yeah, yeah. North um, Houston. He put a leash on his steer and brought no. it into the store. This no, he did not. Corn steer to see if their policy would allow that. And he took video, and apparently they seemed pretty okay with it. They were like petting it and stuff. But it's this huge, massive steer because Texas. Because Texas. Well, Texas. you've seen people like ride steers through Whataburger drive throughs and stuff like that. So that doesn't surprise me that much. That's awesome. Till it took a uh, Texas sized dump on the uh, yeah, right? in the yeah. fish department. I was just like, going to ask, what if that happened? Either either one or two got unleashed in there. That would not be good. Oh, I guarantee both one and two. Maybe even number three got unleashed. <laughs> what's, what's that? I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't can, know. You, can you imagine that announcement over the loudspeaker about a cleanup uh, on aisles? Uh, clean one yeah, five? right. <laughs> Yeah. That poor high school kid who's making eight bucks an hour or whatever, like <laughs> gets his little dust pan and takes it over there. Not good. Yeah. Not good. That's awesome. Because Texas. Because. because because Texas. All right. So uh let's jump now over into our Texas music minute where we bring y'all something from a Texas artist that might wet your whistle for Texas music. Y'all know one of my favorite artists of all time is Charlie Crockett. He's been on the Texas Music Minute eons ago. Well, with quarantine and everything, y'all have probably seen the explosion of like at-home concerts. It's been kind of cool. People are doing shows from their living room. Pat Green is on it. Uh, our little local uh, pub and hangout, Mesquite Creek, has been doing Skeeter sessions where they have an artist do some music. Anyway, Texas Monthly has a thing called the Texas Monthly Living Room Series. Charlie did one, and uh, I got a little recording of it here. He's, he's so cool. Y'all listen to this guy talk. He's like, the only thing I can describe him at is, is a, a Terlingua pimp. I don't know why. That just like, he's just, he's so cool. Wow. What's happening in Texas and beyond? This is Charlie Crockett tuning in for uh, Texas Monthly and Ham and Austin, Texas. And I want to let y'all know that all donations for this little show I'm going to put on for y'all our uh, donations going to ham to help out musicians health care uh needs oh yeah there's a he's recording a real thing there's a barking dog in the background that's one of the things i love so much they've all been so honest you know you're stripping away all the stuff Lily, my dog. <laughs> Y'all go check out Texas Monthly. We'll link it in the show notes. But pretty, pretty cool. Have you guys watched any living room concerts from anybody yet? To pass I the have. time? Yeah. Yes. Who? Mm -hmm. What do you watch? Um, I've been watching the Skeeter sessions. Oh, and yeah. Also, a, a buddy of mine, David Ramirez, has been doing a few of those as well. Yeah. And um, he's wonderful. And a different friend of mine sure. named Vic, who's out of um, the Vegas area, he's been doing a couple of them too. And it's pretty funny with his because he's doing it with his with his girlfriend. And so they're talking about how one of them has to go check the spaghetti that's on the stove while they keep on playing or go check <laughs> the oven. Yeah, See, so it's awesome. It's real. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Super, super real. Lindsay, what about you? 
Um, so to bring it back to the Hamilton at the beginning, um, <laughs> have y'all seen the Some Good News, like that Hamilton bit? It's like they got the entire cast together and they perform, um, I can't remember which song, but it's like all of them in their living rooms singing together. And it's even like backup singers and like Linda oh, and Mel dude, Miranda, cool. and it was awesome. So check it out. Some Good News? Interesting. Yeah. All right. All right. We'll find are, that too. Are, that'll are be, they, that'll be in the show notes. Are they six feet apart in a wide angle lens? They're all, it's like on Zoom. So it's I'm like just kidding. Brady I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> That's too awesome. Oh man, too awesome. Cool. Um, all right, y'all. Now, questions from the back seat. All right. So we're going to start with one that is very to the point. Uh, Jerry A on Facebook asked us, what are your top five barbecue places in Texas? Oh, Putting man. you in the, uh, yeah, the hot seat right now. Back when, back when we could eat Texas barbecue? Yes. And uh, stand in lines. Oh, oh wow. man. Yeah, right, right, right. You got wow. real. You got up in people's business in the Good barbecue line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, you want a sip of my Lone Star? Sure, man. Pass the Lone Star down the line. This is a very hard question, obviously, right? I'll preface it with this. What barbecue do I eat the most of? Rudy's barbecue. But I consider that, I don't necessarily, when I get my top five, I don't consider that in there. But here we go. I, and this is in no order, and I'm just going to rattle them off. Uh, Bodacious Barbecue in Longview. Franklin Barbecue in Austin. Uh, Louis Miller's in Taylor. Miller's Barbecue in Belton. And Luling City Market. Was that five? Mm, yeah. Yeah. All right. That's five. And then some other ones on the outside, like Terry Black's Barbecue in downtown Austin. I mean, law barbecues, hard to hard to dispute. Pecan Lodge, can't say anything bad about Pecan Lodge. Um, and then and then quickly I'm at 10. I'm like, oh man. So it's a lot harder than it than you think it is. I, I would never venture to say my number one is somebody. And then I, I love Snow's barbecue too. So what about y'all? Y'all have a favorite? Y'all have a top five? Is you know, this something you I don't, ponder? I don't know if I can go to four. Five. I, I will say that from being on the road with the crew, I, I love Pecan Lodge for sure. Like oh, yeah. Um, I like Corkscrew in spring. That was a surprise for me. Oh, see, Corkscrew. Corkscrew was off the charts. And you know me, I'm not a big brisket fan, and you made me try their brisket, and it was amazing. Hey, so see, that, it, that was great. Brisket um, conversion for Todd. That's a big deal. And then bodacious. That was just a. That was a. That was also a surprise. I wasn't expecting yeah. that. And bodacious yeah, yeah, was yeah. fantastic. And then I. I like style switch in Austin. I really do. I. I actually think they're one of the better ones in Austin. Just for me, my personal taste. Oh yeah, yeah. Style switch is good. Very good. Lindsay. Well, I'm not as widely barbecue traveled as y'all, but I will say that you can grow up the barbecue. Oh I, yeah. I do. I love Pecan Lodge has a special place in my heart because it was my first like three hour line or whatever. <laughs> in the cold. So, and it was good. I mean, it was good too, but just kind of that memory. And then yeah. I love Louis Muir. I think it's classic. It's a great place to oh, go. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, cool. My two. <laughs> All right. Well, we gave some people a list when, when life resumes as normal, y'all got some places to go. All right. What's the next Lindsay? All right, so we always get fun questions that are really random and make zero sense. So here's <laughs> one. Marilyn A. asks, where can we buy a stuffed turkey vulture like the one on your show, <laughs> your Big Ben episode? For the next few months, they might be fun to have or to give for those who feel safe. You have a marketing platform, so this might be a new business opportunity for your show. Wow. I love it when people do our, like they're, they're business planning for us. They're seeing the future and they're seeing a big boom in the turkey vulture market, which I love. Yeah, yeah. I, the only, only place I can say to get one of those is the Terlingua General Store in Terlingua, Texas. That's the only place I know to get one. I bet you some state parks sell them, but closed. Wah, wah, wah. She saw so the turkey vulture and said, I want that. So back to your point there, Chad, I guess you can get it at Terlingua when you go visit the Terlingua pimp, Charlie. That's right. Charlie will be out there playing on the porch for <laughs> sure. Uh, okay. It, it, that's awesome. Any others, Lindsay? Uh, yeah, we have one from an out-of-state person, which is kind of fun. Oh, that's um, cool. Katrina S. from Snellville, Georgia said, I love your show. We recently moved to Georgia. Do you know of anyone here that does what you do? 
Ooh, no, no, I don't. But I'm not a day trip convention where you guys all meet up together and yeah, right. <laughs> I've got that'll be the sign when we have spinoff minions in all the different states doing it. Uh, we better get a lot of funding for some of the states right off the bat because the show's not going to last very long. Rhode Island, Delaware, Connecticut. Those are going to be over very fast. North very Dakota. Fast. North Dakota. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, no, I don't. I can't help you out. Mm -hmm. I, I would hope that for the same reasons I started the Day Tripper, there was someone there who thought, man, Georgia's got a lot of beautiful spots. We should make a show promoting them. But I just don't know who that person is. I think it needs to be Katrina. I think that Katrina needs to start yep. it in Georgia. Yep. That's right. That's right. Our licensing fees are very reasonable at this time. Very reasonable. <laughs> no, we don't have licensing fees. Uh, all right. That was awesome. So now, fan rants and musings. I'll start with a nice one. And I got to say, this guy emailed us, but he did not give his name. So anonymous, but it's a great message. He says, what's up, DT? A half hour isn't enough. I'm sure you've heard this before. Love your show. Makes me jealous as hell. I think you need to hire like a 59-year-old apprentice tripper, tripper or something. Better hurry, though. I turn 60 ne next month. Love you, man. Keep up the good work. LOL. Sorry, but I crack me up. <laughs> I, you know what? He's not far off. There's definitely some shows that could have easily been an hour. Easily been an hour. And we do the first cuts of them, and it's like, whoa, this is a 45-minute show. And then the big editing process is whittling it down to 26 minutes and 46 seconds, which may not be as easy as it sounds. It's not as easy as it sounds. So that's a high compliment. All right. Now we've got a nice, angry one. <laughs> Tom S. writes, I know you're trying to appeal to the new Texans flocking here, but please shave the hipster beard and buy a decent hat, please. <laughs> Next time you're in Marfa, stop in at Spradley's Hats and have them make you a Shady Oaks. Ammon Carter's take on the Stetson Open Road. Okay, Shady Oaks. I'm gonna have to check that out. He 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 must have missed the times when I'm wearing my my uh, Open Road Stetson. Stetson. He's talking he's talking about the uh, the palm leaf cowboy hat that so many people out there love. I've been called mm -hmm. a girl tube in the Frio River, uh, an LA uh, LA rock band lead singer. Uh, hey, yep. we got to just be in me. That's all I am. Just be in me. And it's Bradley Hats is in Alpine. So I will take one little dig against him. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, was trying, I was trying to think. I was like, Spratly's not in Marfa. No. <laughs> it's all right. It's obviously, all he obviously, he hasn't watched the show that much. Yeah, right, right. He, he he needs to catch up on some more Day Tripper. All right, now we've got a, a nice one. This is about the app. This is a really nice uh, message we got. It's from Vicki M. She says, thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful app. I've already created a list of places to visit. This is a godsend. My health is not the best, but this allows us to have an array of choices to go out and visit our beloved state. You and your team are wonderful and make us laugh as we watch your show every week. Oh, all the feels on that one. Thank you. That was yeah. nice. That was nice. Are we going to end there? Or are we going to actually go to another bad one? Another angry one? So it's like, it's nice yes. because yes. for every really angry one, we get a really nice one like that. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. It's an emotional um, roller coaster. It really is. This one is specifically about the Port Arthur episode when we visited Sabine Pass. Okay. So, okay. Oh, oh. Carter K from Arlington, Texas says, I used to be a fan Someone tell Mr. Garner that his episode on Port Arthur was very good, but his pathetic, politically correct semi-apology, that's a lot to say, about reporting on the Confederate victory at Sabine Pass was more than I could take. I am really ashamed of you, you spineless creature. Look in the mirror, dude. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. whoa. I'm not even sure about his point. I don't, I don't know if he's mad about wait. the way it was covered, if he's mad we covered it. Wait, I did... Sure. I did, you know, obviously what, like the civil, covering the civil war is a delicate matter. And this yeah. guy sounds like I should have been more pro South because the South did win. And so when you're covering a Confederate victory, that's even more of a sensitive topic. 
Um, but then, you know, I was basically saying that I wasn't supporting slavery by covering a Confederate victory. He seems he seems to have an issue with me not supporting slavery. And for that, I have no response. Thanks. I guess. <laughs> the end. <laughs> the yeah. end. There might be some other shows for that guy out there. Not our show. Well, guys, I cannot tell you how much fun this was. I don't know why we took two years off. We're going to do better now. Uh, please, we just had to go out and get new links on all the formats. So if you thought you were subscribed to the Day Tripper podcast, double check. Uh, we're now on Google Podcasts, Stitcher, um, Apple Podcasts. But there are new outlets for you to subscribe to. So please go on and subscribe everywhere you can to support our show. This show was brought to you by our world headquarters, a way you could help support us during this crazy time. And the makers that we carry uh, would be to just go online, just do a little shopping. If something tickles your fancy, why not order it? We're still shipping things out. Check it out, thedaytripper.com. Click on store or shop. I can't remember what it is. It's up there in the title bar. Or go to store.thedaytripper.com. And this next episode, well, we'll be back in May with another Talk in Texas very soon. Thanks for joining us. You guys, it's time to say adios. Adios. Later. <laughs> and for me, via con Dios, amigos.